Hello everyone, and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, and welcome to part two of my review of Lego Harry Potter, set number 71043, Hogwarts Castle. This set includes 6,020 pieces, four minifigures, 32 nanofigures, and it retails for about $400 in the United States. In the first part of this video, I took a main look at the castle structure itself, including the boathouse, great hall, grand staircase tower, stone bridge, viaduct, and the viaduct entrance building. So in this video, I'll be taking a look at all of the side builds included in the set. The four minifigures, 32 nano figures, Hagrid's hut, the Whomping willow, the Hungarian horntail, and five little boats. So... Let's begin taking a look at those now. The set includes five identical boat builds, and I've decided to put one nano figure in each, which is their maximum carrying capacity, but for the scale, I think that's quite all right. You can see that they each have these sort of wedge pieces to represent the wake of the boats in the water, which is a nice detail and makes it so that they're not going to be falling over. The build is one that I actually didn't know was a, was a legal technique until the set where they just l took this arched window piece and they just laid it down on top of some studs. And it's very simple. Um, I lo the shaping is good, though, and I really like the lantern up top. That's a nice touch. And it's good that you get a good amount because you really can recreate the scene where the first years first come to Hogwarts. In fact, I'm not sure, but I think in the movie there might have only been five boats, since there weren't a ton of first years. Like, five boats, not including the one Hagrid was in, I mean. And, yeah, just some very simple builds, but definitely an important inclusion, and definitely a very well done one. Moving forward from the Philosopher's Stone, our next... Side build comes from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, this being the Whomping Willow plus a tiny Fort Anglia. Here I'm using Professor Lupin for scale, and this willow looks pretty cool. You can see that on the one side we have the opening at the bottom represented using a couple of black pizza tiles, which works pretty well, and we just have some sort of root detailing around the bottom, and this column brick definitely helps. The... Anglia in the branches is an extremely simple build, just using four pieces, which looks really good in the tree. However, it definitely doesn't scale very well with the nano figures. You're not fitting two people in there. And it's also kind of a funny thing, because this vehicle is a one by 2 build, and if you see the main set, you'll see that the little spires at the top of the Grand Staircase Tower are 2 by 2 builds, and... Canonically, Dumbledore's office is in the tallest tower, meaning that this car is the same size as Dumbledore's office in this build. And Dumbledore's office isn't even in there in the main set, and what we get for the tower, which is way bigger, is a small section and not a full thing. So, yeah, the scaling in the set isn't 100% consistent, but I think that for having the car be a thing that could possibly exist in our reality... This is pretty good. For articulation, the tree can spin all around, and the branches can also just each move up and down individually, so nearly the same articulation we have for the full-size Whomping Willow in 75953. And I like these, um, these branch pieces in dark orange, which originated in, in Minecraft for dead bushes, and... I also like how we sort of have the two different sizes of branches, with these ones being a bit larger and getting thicker at the top. I mean, yeah, there isn't much else to say here, aside from the fact that this is a very good mini-build that captures the thing, and in terms of proportions with the branches, and and it might actually be a bit more accurate than the minifigure scale version, funnily enough. It's definitely a lot larger in comparison to a figure. So even if scaling isn't 100% here with the castle itself, this is a really cute build, and I like it. A lot. Next up, here we have Hagrid's Hut, based on its appearance in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is a really nice build. It is 
It by far has the largest piece count of any of the little mini builds off to the side, but it looks fantastic in my opinion. Again, this is from Prisoner of Azkaban, so you do get the two large sections of the hut, which are very round, with the nice roofs that are mostly round, but they do top off in that steep cone, which is accurate. You also get the chimney back here, which is a nice touch. You get a couple of little pumpkins, which, considering how in the book Hagrid was go growing giant pumpkins, those are actually pretty accurate. And you can also see just sort of a little rocky outcropping, which you could imagine is the one that Hermione punches Malfoy against, even if the height's a bit short. Maybe add a one-by-one -one brick under that, then that would definitely work. And then here you just have a couple of these one-by-ones, which I believe are representing stairs up to the door. Otherwise, just, I guess, some random wooden pallets. And I like the variation here. You have the two just brown pieces for the doors, one on each side. But then you have all of this different variation with, like, some windows, tiles, round tiles. It just looks very good all around, including, again, the chimney in the back. And around the back, we actually get Aragog, so I guess that's sort of a bonus little figure here, who is just using the... for some reason this is out... But anyway, he's just using the existing LEGO new version of the spider piece, this same version appeared in the Aragog's Lair set, which is the smallest Harry Potter set for 2018, and this will also appear, funnily enough, in the Hagrid's Hut set for 2019. But I don't think that the, that the medium nougat color was the right choice for Aragog. I think that if we're going off of an existing color, black is way closer... And, I mean, if we were fine with introducing a new color, just going theoretically, maybe a dark brown would probably be the best, or even a normal brown, but Nougat is definitely too white, to the point where it almost looks like this could be the corpse of Aragog from Half-Blood Prince. I don't know, but aside from the color, he still looks really good. It's a great choice to just reuse that piece here, and he scales pretty well with the Nano figure. And in general, yeah, this is another thing just like the Willow, where the nano figures scale really well with the building. So, in all actuality, it's less that these builds are, aren't scaled to the castle, and more that the castle isn't really scaled to everything else, which is interesting. And you can also sort of see this in some of the other rooms, like how the really big doors aren't that much, are only about two nano figs tall, just for example. Or how the caretaker's office section next to the Great Hall is... Definitely not really big enough to have a bunch of stuff in it. Just a little stuff like that. Interesting with the scaling, and I'll talk a bit more about that in the final verdict later on, but yeah, this is a really cute design for Hagrid's Hut, and I think they did a great job with it. Our final build of the mini side builds is the Hungarian Horntail from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And it's having a bit of difficulty standing up right now because one and only one of its legs has a little stamp piece on the bottom for the foot. The idea there being that then you can have it climbing on the grand staircase tower like was seen in the film adaptations. You can sort of get that. Yeah, but just removing that stamp piece so we can just get a bit of a better look at the dragon otherwise. Let's stand up. Give me a second. I'm gonna try to get this to be able to stand up on just its two little nubbins. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Okay. But anyway, you can see that this scales pretty well in comparison to a nano figure. Debatably a bit better than the minifigure scale version version coming soon will be. Um just sort of an interesting thing there, and I really like the colors on this as well. It's not 100% accurate, but I think I actually prefer how it looks. Um, with all the dark tan, it looks really cool. Also, these dark tan wings are cool to get in the set because they, the only other set they come in is the Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon, where they're used for a Minoc. And I'm just looking around, you get a really good amount of articulation here. Here you can see the head, which does have the accurate horns on the top and at the sides, as well as the little beak area. 
can rotate up and down. The wings can each move up and down and in and out. So you could put this in a more flying pose if you wanted to. Something like this if you turn the wings out. Though I think it does look best when you have the wings folded up though. Yeah, more like this. This is the good look. The legs can each move forward and back, and this whole attachment that the legs are connected to can move up and down, as can the barbed tail. So a lot of good stuff here, and, like, yeah, just a lot of good stuff. You get a bunch of barbs, so it gets that spiky appearance, and, yeah, there isn't much else to say. It just captures the look of the Hungarian horntail really well for such a small build. And that is the final mini build in the set, or nano build, I guess, being, a being more accurate. So now, it's time to move on to what is going to be probably a little bit of a tedious process. I'm going to be looking at all 32 of the set's nano figures. So, um, strap in, boys and girls. So here we have our first nano figure, and these are fantastic. Um, to sort of get a sense of how tiny these are, here's a nano figure... This is how a minifigure measures up. You can see that the whole thing, including the base, is not even as tall as a standard pair of minifigure legs. So these things are minuscule. So the amount of detail they've been able to get onto them is very impressive. Also, let it be noted that in this video, I will not be comparing these nano figures to the main Lego Harry Potter minifigures that we've gotten throughout an assortment of sets. Nor will I be comparing them to the original Lego Harry Potter nano figures from 2010. Or micro figures, rather. I'll just be looking at these 32 figures on their own merits. Starting with the boy who lived himself, Harry Potter, who is absolutely adorable. I mean, look at that little face. He doesn't have the lightning scar detailed in, but the cylindrical glasses definitely key us in as to who this is. And the hair is really well done. It's a similar shape to what we see on the current Lego minifigure of Harry. And, yeah, the face is very simple, but it looks just like Harry Potter at this size. As for the torso and legs, they are very simply detailed with his Hogwarts robes. A choice they definitely made simply because it's cheaper to produce the torso and legs as the same color rather than having the sweater be a dark gray and the pants be black, that would have been way more difficult, but it ended up looking fantastic on these figures and way better than if they'd done something else. These just look really clean, in my opinion. And the robe detailing is nothing special. In fact, we see this and color variants on this on 16 of the nano figures in the set, so half, basically. But it's a very well-done design. There is... No printing around the back, although it's not needed, and there's no articulation. Um, if you can't tell, these nano figures are just... That base attaches on top of a single stud, and just comparing that to the size of one of these figures, yeah, they are absolutely tiny. It should also be noted that the heads are the same, are the same diameter as the Lego bar pieces that they use for lightsaber blades, and that they used to use for wands, in the Harry Potter sets from 2001 through 2017. But yeah, that's really all there is to say about this Harry. He's a very simple figure, but a very cute one. Next is Ron, who, would, it makes sense, he is the same figure as Harry aside from the head, so the robes are identical. Ron's face is pretty generic, but the red hair definitely helps to key us in as to who it is. And the hairstyle is pretty cool, and it's interesting, because this doesn't really reflect any existing hairpiece we've seen for Ron, but I think it might actually be better. But, um, yeah, you can see that the hair is printed all the way around the back, which is very good. But yeah, again, these nano figures are very simple, and now that I've gone over the base of them with Harry, this is going to be relatively quick. Finishing up the golden trio, here we have Hermione, who looks pretty good. I like the printing on the front of, and with the very square hair with just the little part in the middle. It 
it looks very good for just a young Emma Watson. And again, it's printed all the way around the back. Um, unfortunately, there really wasn't any way they could continue the hair down a bit further because of the because there would have been a pretty significant cutoff. I mean, I think it might have looked a tiny bit better if maybe they had tried to do something like that. Just, um, it is a bit odd to see Hermione with such short hair, but there really isn't any way around it, and she looks very cute, and again, is definitely recognizable as the character, even if this figure isn't perfect. Our first Slytherin is Draco Malfoy, and you can see that the robe detailing is the same, except instead of using red and gold, it's using green and silver, which still looks very good. Um, the head is... Pretty simple, but the hair design is just actually, never mind, I was about to say it's a bit different from all the standard male figures in the set, but no, it's the same design we see on the standard male student figure in the set that we get a bunch of from different houses, just in blonde, which is, it looks really good, and with the little dip in the middle for the Widow's Peak, it works perfectly fine. Malfoy is one of the few figures in the set that is not bearing a smile, with instead just a more of a neutral frown, which works perfectly well for him. And while this set does include many, many other students, the rest of them are officially unnamed, and because of that, I'll be getting to them later on in the video. But for now, let's move on to some of our staff members. So here is Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore, here definitely based on his portrayal by Richard Harris in the first two movies. And this figure is pretty good in my opinion. Um, for To go with the obvious, there's a pretty enormous cutoff between the head and the rest of the beard, but honestly I don't really mind since there was no way around that, and honestly I think it's kind of charming. And I really do love how they did print on the classic minifigure smiley face, even when it is being, even with the mouth being over the beard, rather nonsensically. It's very well done. The torso and, and legs have a surprising amount of detail for a figure of such small size. I mean, it really is only two colors, but it looks really good with all the gold highlights. In fact, I think I might like this better than the official minifigure of this outfit. And again, no printing around the back aside from the head, but that's perfectly good. I wasn't really expecting the hair to continue down the back of the figure. Yeah, this is a really fantastic design for Dumbledore, and it just looks about as good as it could have. Minerva McGonagall is an interesting character with how they've done her. Um, however, I might have to say that she is my least favorite of all of the nano figures in the set, because while the torso and legs are really well done, again, just like Dumbledore, in fact, I think I might like these a bit more because we have more colors and printing going nearly all the way down to the feet, um, everything above that is a bit iffy. Um, on mine in particular, because there's actually a bit of a misprint on mine, you can sort of see that dot in the center, which is just a bit unfortunate, but... Aside from that, the head is weird, because they decided to try and represent her hat by just having the top of the head be in dark green, and it just doesn't work, because she has a tall, pointy wizard's hat, so what they should have done is just color the head in dark gray to just have her hair, her short hair that's, you know, wrapped in a little bun. That would have been perfect, and... I don't know, again, like, this figure's perfectly fine, but it's definitely my least favorite of the set for that reason. It still does capture the look of the character, though, so it's definitely, again, not a bad figure, just not my cup of tea, personally. Severus Snape has some great purple in his color scheme on his very simple torso, and his face does a great job at capturing the greasy hair the man has, if his, even if his face is perhaps a bit too blank. Yeah. I mean, not sure what it is about this guy. Maybe, I don't know, maybe if they'd give him a bit, him a bit more of a specific frown, it would have worked. But again, the hair really does tie it together, so it is a very snapey figure still. Next up is Professor R.J. Lupin, the only one of the four marauders to be depicted in the set. 
And he is very good looking as well. Very fashionable with his tan suit. Which I think looks pretty good with the sort of olive green waistcoat underneath. You can see his hair is printed in brown and he has a pretty nice little mustache on there. Interesting how because of that he doesn't have a mouth, but it still captures the character pretty well. And um, also, I like that they didn't print on any scratches because that pr definitely would have made the figure's print feel a bit cluttered at such a small size. So, yeah, they did a really good job on Lupin here. Moving to a Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, a shade more insidious, here we have Dolores Umbridge, who I think the... Looks, she looks pretty good. The hair is well done, as is the face. It's sort of like Snape, where they just kind of give her an, a standard frown, so there isn't much expression going on there. But I think that, again, for how tiny these are, it's perfectly fine to not want to have something so little and cute have an evil face, as would befit the character. Um, the torso and legs are really well done there, though with just some nice magenta printing on there. Yeah, just, again, very simple, but very good, and I like how they did detail in her skirt as well. That's a nice touch. Next up, we have caretaker Argus Filch, who, for him, I think the blank expression works pretty well here. Um, yeah, and I also like how we just have the sideburns printed on with the actual head just being bald. That's a pretty good thing, even if maybe around the back there should have been just a bit of printing, but I think it's... Probably the best choice overall, since LEGO doesn't print on the back of figures' heads for the nano figures, unless it's just all a solid color. So yeah. Interestingly, his waistcoat is the same design as Lupin's. It's just that with the coat now continues down onto the legs, while with Lupin's, it was a suit jacket that cut off. Still though, Filch is a really awesome figure, and honestly probably one of my favorites from this set, surprisingly. Here we have he who shall not be named himself, Lord Voldemort, who is rocking his dark green robe from Deathly Hallows Part 2. And I really like the blank face he has here. Like with Umbridge and Snape, I legitimately am a bit annoyed with it because it doesn't really capture their personality. But Voldemort here just looks like he has no purpose in life and I love it. He's just so confused. He doesn't know what's going on. He's just along for the ride. Um, but yeah... The torso is very simple, just with the black line and then a bit of white at the neck, but it's still very well done, I think, for the character. I mean, there isn't much you can do with Voldemort, really. So, well done. And I think it was a good idea that they didn't try to detail in his tiny little nose slits, since I, since those would have had to have been, like, minuscule for the printing, and I don't think LEGO could have pulled that off. And, like, again, I... I already kind of mentioned how tiny these are compared to a minifigure, but, like, those little eyes, when I when I say that the printing is small, I mean, like, those are tiny pinpricks. Like, if you just went, went to a piece of paper with a pencil and you just made a tiny quick dot, it would be about twice the size of each of this, these, this guy's eyes. So, yeah. They definitely couldn't have detailed in the nose slits, so it's a good thing that they didn't try. Our last officially named character is Bellatrix Lestrange, who is definitely a bit of an odd choice, considering that her only appearance at Hogwarts was during books 6 and 7. But I mean, hey, I guess if they're including Voldemort, who never showed up until the finale, she makes sense as well. Even if personally for a selection, I probably would have gone with another staff member, personally. But she looks pretty good for what it is. The hair is very well done as is the torso, which is very simple, but it works perfectly well. Yeah. While all of the next 12 student figures are officially unnamed, some of them do clearly represent specific characters, such as Neville Longbottom here, who has dark brown hair and a very distinctive face, which even they were even able to detail in a tiny little bit of black in the teeth to give him a little gap, and that's fantastic. Like, this is honestly probably my favorite of all 32 nano figures in the set because of that expression. Like, near, like every other figure in the set just has a little smile or a little frown. Neville here is rocking some great expressiveness, though, 
which is great, and it really does capture the character just fantastically. Next up is Ginny, who introduces our generic female figure template that you'll see a couple times throughout the remaining 12 students, or well, remaining 10, I guess, after her and Neville. Um, but it looks pretty good with the sort of parted hair at the top, resembling the current Lego ponytail piece, as well as just another standard smile. I think it's a bit odd that her hair is in dark red, while Ron's was in dark orange. Not like a super huge complaint, just sort of an odd thing I noticed. I think it does definitely work well for Ginny here, so they might have just gone with it based on aesthetic preference. The final of the half dozen Gryffindors included in the set is Parvati Patil, and this is actually her first physical appearance in Lego form, which is kind of interesting. Um, and yeah, she uses the same exact design as Ginny, just with black hair and that medium nougat coloring for the face, which works pretty well for her. Um, now, personally, if I had to pick my third Gryffindor, I probably would have gone with someone else. Like, personally, I probably would have gone with Dean Thomas, but which is funny because some of the other houses have students that could be Dean Thomas, just with the wrong colors. But anyway... Yeah, so Parvati is definitely a good figure, just definitely not my first choice. And again, I think it is kind of funny that, that this is the very first time we're getting her. And as of right now, she is the only character in the set based on a specific figure that is n not getting, or specific character that is not getting a minifigure version by the end of 2019. Everyone else has had one. Well, I guess technically her and the black chess queen haven't had a figure, but, you know, really Parvati's the only student character that's specifically mentioned that hasn't had a minifigure is what I'm saying. Just sort of an interesting thing I noticed. While our three spare Gryffindors are all unique, our three Hufflepuff students are unfortunately all the same, aside from the color of print used for the face. Which is fine, but... It would have been nice to have gotten at least one specific character. Um, just spinning these around, you can see the yellow color used for the tie and stripe, which is good. Um, I don't know. Maybe at least we could have gotten one specifically to represent Cedric Diggory. And also, I think it would have been nice if each house had had at least one female figure. But, um, trying to point out specific characters, the only one I can think of is maybe the one on the left could be Justin Finch Fletchley. But other than that, I don't know. He's the only Ravenclaw I can... Ravenclaw. The only Hufflepuff I can think of with black hair. But, yeah. Definitely a perfectly fine assortment. But, you know, again, I would have expected them to at least do a specialized figure for, like, Cedric Diggory. Er... Yeah, honestly, he's the only one that probably would have gotten one, but he didn't. Oh, well. It's still good to at least get representation from all four houses, you know. Much like the Hufflepuffs, our three spare Slytherins are all wholly generic. Just again, three males that just have different print colors for the face. Yeah, I'm um, trying to assign characters to these is a bit easier, because the one in the middle it could definitely be um, Blaze Zabini, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And the one on the left could actually be Cr Vincent Crabb, Gregory Goyle, or the character I'm using it for is actually y a young Tom Riddle from his memory form in the Chamber of Secrets. But yeah, not much else to say on these guys, though. They're just three pretty generic Slytherin students. Still perfectly good, though. Thankfully, we do get a specific character for Ravenclaw, that being Luna Lovegood, who, again, uses that standard female design they also used on Ginny and Parvati, but I think it definitely works the best here with the blonde. And in general, Luna here just looks very cute, which I think befits her character very nicely. And also you can see that Ravenclaw uses the blue and silver, which just looks very nice. And as a Ravenclaw myself, I give this figure a definite pass. And up there with Neville is one of my favorites in the set, Luna is. After Luna, 
our final two human characters in the set, our two generic Ravenclaw students. I'm glad that we only get two generic ones as opposed to three with the other houses. Um, again, I think it would have been nice if for the other houses, at least one of the three could have been a specifically named character. Slytherin I'm kind of fine with because, again, you could see one as Zabini, and then you could see the other one as a bunch of different characters. But with Hufflepuff, it would have been nice to have gotten, you know, like, just Cedric Diggory. As for this, well, I think it would have been nice if this one on the left could have maybe been printed up into a figure for Cho Chang. She has black hair, so it wouldn't have cost them any extra budget for printing around the back of the head. Which, by the way, didn't mention earlier, but that's totally why all of these generic figures have black hair. It's just cheaper, which totally makes sense. Um, and, um, as for choosing characters who these could be, the le one on the left could be Terry Boot or Michael Corner. And, yeah, I can't really think off the top of my head of who the one on the right could be, and even then, now that I think of it, I'm not... I'm not sure if Michael Corner has black hair or not. But, um, yeah. So those are our last two human figures, but we still have eight more to go for nano figures in general, so let's take a look at some of those. These three figures are all just unprinted, but from left to right, we have a white chess queen, a black chess queen, and the statue of the Hogwarts architect. Now, it's never officially specified, actually, whether the two chess pieces are queens or not. The description just calls them chess pieces. But, um, I'm going to infer that they're queens based on the fact that, well, the only figure for the giant chess game in Philosopher's Stone that we've ever gotten before was the white chess queen, which was also monochromatic, so I'd imagine that that's what these are representing. And they both look pretty good. The white piece has also appeared in some architecture sets, but I'm inclined to believe that the black nano figure is fully exclusive to this set. The gold one on the right, the statue, is one that w first debuted in, well, for the character, I mean, this was actually the very first color for this piece that debuted all the way back in 2010 in Minifigure Series 2 for the Karate Guy. But um, for the character, this was our first appearance of the statue of the Hogwarts architect. Although we are getting a, much like the chess piece, a fully monochromatic minifigure of him in the upcoming Harry Potter advent calendar. So these are all actually pretty accurate to their minifigure versions. And again, just to recap, of all of the uh, characters that have some sort of designation and aren't just generic students... The black chess piece is alongside Parvati for the only characters that don't have any minifigure variations. Although, really, the black queen, queen. So just, you know, black torso, black cylinder piece for the head, and a black slope piece for the dress. Pretty simple. Yeah, I've talked way too long about three generic nano figures, but one cool thing about these three is that since they have no printing you actually get an extra copy of each of these as a spare part. So that's pretty cool. The last figure we get in the set is this Dementor, or more accurately, our last five figures, because yeah, the set does include five, and these are the exception to the set using the standard nano figure pieces, because instead, this is the LEGO Star Wars Emperor Palpatine hologram piece, recolored into black, with no printing, but it works perfectly fine. And it gives these guys both a cool cloak and a hood, and a slight but noticeable height advantage over the standard nano figure. Actually, putting them side by side, it's a lot more notable than I'd expected. But anyway, yeah, there isn't much else to say about these guys. They're basically just a nano figure with a hood and a cape, and slightly bigger for some unknown reason. Definitely a very cool piece to get in black, and... Well, this is not exclusive, it's uncommon, as you just get five in this set, and then two in the Amazon-exclusive Darth Vader's Castle set from Rogue One. So, a pretty uncommon piece. And again, this is the final nano figure, five, that we get in the set. So now we'll be moving on to the very last thing I'm reviewing here, which is the set's four minifigures. Or, well, before we take a look at the figures... 
Let's take a look at the stand they come on, which is pretty simple, but at the front you have stickers on 2x2 two two tiles for each of the four house crests. And I like how we have the sort of dark tan stripe going through the middle for a bit of nice detailing. I mean, from the side you can see that this is a very simple stand. Each of the figures, if you're curious, is just standing on a pair of jumpers. But I mean, yeah. It's a perfectly fine stand, and it does what it needs to do. Display the four minifigures in style. So, let's take a look at those minifigs now, shall we? The first figure we get here is the founder of Gryffindor House, Godric Gryffindor. He was also the owner of the Sorting Hat, if you didn't know. And this figure is pretty cool. Starting with his accessories, he gets a brown wand, as well as the Sword of Gryffindor, sort of held back to be sheathed, and, um, I think it's a bit unfortunate that in this new line, the Sword of Gryffindor is just the standard broadsword piece, not gonna lie. Maybe it would have helped if they'd been able to put some printing on here, like maybe printing the blade in metallic silver, and, and that little sort of circular indent on the hilt, maybe they could have printed a bit of red for some rubies? I don't know, I think that it probably should have had a new piece made for it. This is a bit lame, in my opinion. But, moving the accessories out of the way, the figure itself looks pretty good, even if unfortunately the cape is slightly mangled by how you have to hold the sword against it. But he still looks pretty good. Um, starting with the torso and legs, they are very well done. There is a bit of discoloration on the legs because they're printed onto dark brown, but I think it looks good and the printing is well done. And you can see that he is wearing sort of a cross around his neck, which is interesting. He has a dark brown cape, and his hairpiece is an exclusive one. It is Doc Brown's from LEGO Dimensions, but in a dark orange color. His beard, however, is not new. It is one. It is the Santa beard piece in dark orange, which has appeared previously in Nexo Knights. Removing those pieces so we can get a better look at the rest of the figure underneath. You can see that his face is definitely a bit stern. I'm definitely a bit older under the beard than I'd been expecting. And there you can just see the rest of the torso with the top of the cape printed at the top. Nice to have a bit of detail that you won't be seeing under the beard. The back of the figure is exceptionally simple, just with a couple of lines and a tiny bit of normal red printed up at the top. And he does not get an alternate face print, although with the beard at the front, it's not like you'd really be able to see the change much. So I'm just going to reassemble this minifigure. And overall, I think that this is a pretty cool representation of Godric Gryffindor, pretty accurate to his canon appearance that we that is currently available at I want to say like Universal Studios at the Hogwarts section not entirely positive where this design originated I just know that for what it's worth it looks pretty cool and and works very well as a collectible minifigure Next figure is Helga Hufflepuff, who gets a dark brown wand, as well as her goblet, which was later made into one of Voldemort's Horcruxes, and that's just the standard gold goblet piece, nothing special about it, but it's still a good accessory to get for her. The figure's torso and the new dress piece are very nicely done. Lots of great printing on there with the dark brown and some gold patterns. I also like how on the side of the dress piece you have a little pouch. The face print is pretty nice, with not too many wrinkles, mainly just around the eyes and the mouth. Well, where else would you have them? But you know what I mean. There aren't nearly as many lines as there were on Gryffindor. And unlike him, she does get an alternate face. This definitely being a bit more of a cocky expression, which I quite like. And if we lift up her cape, and the capes are the old papery style in the set rather than the new, more fabric-y pieces, which I much prefer the paper capes. You can see that not only does her torso get back printing, but the dress piece does as well, and that looks really good with the tassels continuing down, as well as the belt. Um, 
There is definitely a notable cutoff between those two pieces in the printing, but I really don't mind. And it's just nice to even get all that great printing, considering that it'll always be covered up by the cape. But yeah, pretty awesome figure for Helga here. Salazar Slytherin is my least favorite of the four minifigures, and not just because of how horribly inconsistent it is that his current canon design has him being bald, even though he had a bunch of hair on the bust of him made in Chamber of Secrets, you know, that the Basilisk came out of, but also I just think that this figure looks much blander than the others. His accessory is a dark tan wand, which definitely doesn't help since that is my least favorite color since, again, it just looks pretty bland in my opinion. Um, he uses Sensei Wu's beard from Ninjago, which works well for his current design, and my favorite part of the figure is definitely the double cape at the back, with that very evil big collar. Big spooky. And I'm um, just removing that and the beard. You can get a better look at his exceptionally evil face. And I do like the face. I like the use of the dark tan lines instead of the standard nougat for the wrinkles. It gives him a much more, I don't know, skeletal look, I guess is the best way to put it. He looks definitely rather emaciated compared to the rest. The torso and legs are pretty simple with just some sand green lines waving down. However, something I, two things I really like are how at the top around the collar you have some little silver stars, which I wish they'd printed onto the actual cape piece. That would have been awesome and a great callback to the original Lego Harry Potter sets from 2001. But also, you can see that he has his locket printed onto the torso. And if they weren't going to include it as a piece, probably using the Lego Friends necklace or the Lego Minifigure Series 7 Swimmer metal piece, if they weren't going to include it on one of those pieces, I'm glad they at least printed it. Oh, and at the back, no alternate face because he's, you know, bald, but he does have some nice back printing with some more stars at the back where the cape would be, and just some more waving lines. So, yeah, as I put him back together and he doesn't even want to stand up, Slytherin is again my least favorite figure of the set, but he's certainly not a bad one, and among most other minifigures he'd rank quite highly just because of the level of detail and quality they put into this guy. It's just that it feels like they put a, a bit more detail and a bit more quality into the other figures in the set, Although I do like his double cape as it refuses to attach. There we go. There we go. And there we go. That was Salazar Slytherin, who could talk to snakes for some reason that's never explained. Why, why, why could he just talk to snakes and he never told the other founders how to do it? I mean, they always talk about how parcel mouths are all the descendants of Slytherin, but like... Did, did, like, was he descended from Parcel Mouths? Or did he just invent the ability and not tell anyone like a jerk? I'm getting off track. Anyway, let's take a look at the set's final minifigure, and also my favorite. And no, Rowena Ravenclaw isn't my favorite just because I'm a Ravenclaw. I actually just really like her design. Her accessory is just a black wand, much like Slytherin, her other accessory is printed on, in this case, it being her fantastic diadem. That looks beautiful with just the silver printing and a bit of dark blue in the middle. That is really well done. And I'm glad that they decided to print it onto the head rather than using the Wonder Woman hairpiece with just obviously the, the diadem printed where the tiara would be, which is what I totally expected them to do if they'd ever made this character. So good choice here. The hairpiece they did go with is this Elizabeth Swan hairpiece that originated with Elizabeth Swan in 2011 for Pirates of the Caribbean. And I am glad to see it again here as it looks very nice. Her face is very kind. Removing it, you can see that there is some great detailing for her torso and dress piece. With I like all how all the silver stars and I adore how when the dress opens up at the bottom, you have that 
amazing sort of silvery pattern where you have all the silver in there on top of that metallic blue color. That looks fantastic. And like all of the other silver highlights look great as well. Around the back, she actually gets a much more stern alternate face, which I think works pretty well. And we can just see many more stars, including some on the back of the dress piece, which are very shiny. It's a bit inconsistent how the stars on the torso aren't as shiny as the ones on the dress, but it's still good. Um, if I had to have one complaint, it's that unlike the other figures here, the skin tone on the torso definitely does not line up with the head color at all. But that's just an issue with Lego, and with the hairpiece over it, it's kind of a non-issue, really. A bigger issue might be that for some reason, they try to detail in, and sort of at the top, where, I don't know what you have, what you really call it, but like, you have the two little lines at the top for, I don't know, bone structure, I guess? And um, those are in dark blue, which looks a bit wacky. If you're looking at those up close, that is kind of bad. But other than that little bit around the neck, this figure is fantastic and my favorite. And that is every single brick included in the set, all 6,020. So now let's take a look at the box, the instruction manuals, all four of them, the extra pieces, and then this review that is two hours long and quite a while in the making will finally be done. Much like the set itself, the box is so huge that I cannot fit it all in frame at once. But you can see that up at the top we have Lego Harry Potter and all of the stats for this set. An interesting tidbit is that the set, the part count of 6,020 is very significant as, this, as set 6020, Magic Shop, was the very first set to ever include a wizard, Magisto who introduced the classic Dumbledore beard piece that was unfortunately last seen in 2013, the wizard hat piece that's still used today, and the fairy wand piece that's still used today. And this set also came out 25 years after that one, so, you know, nice anniversary callback. The main image on the box features the castle, the Dementors floating around, the Horntail, and you have your five boats, and the nano figures spread all about. Nothing too amazing, but it's mainly a display piece, so there isn't exactly much they could do to make it wacky. At the bottom, we have our four figures, our five boats, and underneath the Wizarding World logo, an indication that the boats cannot in fact float. Surprising. Up at the top, we have an actual size reference for the castle, which, according to the box, is 27.4 inches wide, and... 23.1 inches tall. We also have an image comparing this to the castle as it appeared in Philosopher's Stone. Definitely a bit different than what we have here, because again, the castle model here was based on Crimes of Grindelwald. But then we get all 32 nano figures at actual size, and for some reason, because that's not uh, because those aren't considered actual size, we also get the big Millennium Falcon window piece for the top of the tower at actual size. Then, on this side of the box, we have the Harry Potter logo, some stuff in a couple more languages, and then some more images of Hagrid's hut, the Whomping Willow, and the castle itself again. And up at the top, we have the names in French, which are Godric Gryffondor, Helga Pouf Soufflé, Salazar Serpentard, and Rowena Sir Daigle. I'm think I'm gonna call all my Hufflepuff friends Poof Souffle from now on, because that's just legendary. The bottom is just Legal Mumbo Jumbo, and this and this side has the four minifigures, Lego Life, and another image of the set. And then the back of the box features um a whole lot of stuff. All sorts of images at the bottom and on all of those little boxes show stuff I've already seen shown in the review. And then you just have the horntail flying around and a thing showing that you can spin the willow. Other than that, though, there isn't much to see here that I haven't already shown. So now let's move on to the manuals. Oh, and I nearly forgot. Because of the sheer size of the set, half of the set's bags are actually included in this just fully generic white cardboard box. Just thought I'd mention. This set includes four manuals. 
The first covers the cliffside build under the Great Hall and Grand Staircase Tower, and it has 149 pages of building. And then at the end, a uh, thing showing how you're supposed to handle the set and, you know, pick up the two sections, as well as a Lego Life ad. The second one encapsulates the build for the Great Hall and Grand Staircase Tower and is notably thicker, coming in at 194 pages. And then at the back, we just have this nice cloudy aesthetic. Manual number three is the cliffside under the other section, and it's the shortest manual at just 106 pages. And again, that nice cloudy aesthetic. Our final manual encapsulates the remainder of the set. It comes in at 175 pages of building, as well as a couple more pages showing how to connect it all and set everything up. And then at the back, we get a very large parts catalog. And then this nice cloudy aesthetic. So I kind of wish that maybe manual number one had just omitted the garbage wind stuff or maybe put it on the inside because it, it would have been really nice if all four manuals had had that nice cloudy design. But nonetheless, those are the manuals, and now we're, let's move on to the extra pieces and then wrap up this video. This set comes with an absolutely ludicrous amount of spare parts, so for the sake of time, I've just decided to lay out in the front the parts that I think are the coolest. So we get spares of each of the three unprinted nano figs in the set. We get a spare beard for Gryffindor. We get a spare brown paintbrush piece for a nano scale broom, which is great. We get a pair of sand green ski poles, three brown neck brackets, spares of all four main colors of wand, a pink flower from Umbridge's office, the pizza tile in dark gray. We get the one by one tile in sand blue, which is advanced potion making and none too common. We get some cool studs in colors, including a trans purple one and a trans orange one with a hole in the center. We get three different colors of stamp piece. We get one of the new triangular one by ones. We get a spike piece. We get the new flower stock and so many more. But those are just the basics. I mean, a lot of the parts are just standard studs, plates, and tiles. Yeah, you can just pause the video and look around for yourself at all the different stuff here. Yeah. But that's basically all for this review, so now let's finally wrap this up with my final verdict. Now, um, in terms of scaling, I'd like to mention a couple things. First off, some of you might be interested to see how this set compares in size to the promotional Diagon Alley set. There you go. Um, overall, it looks they look really good next to each other. Diagon Alley is actually correctly scaled to the nano figures, though, while Hogwarts is definitely, even, evidently, even at its very large and impressive size, too small for the nano figures to really work with it. Like, I mean, again, the areas are just... There's no real way to depict Hogwarts at even a nano fig size without being... Easily the biggest set of all times. So that's perfectly acceptable to me, and I think the scale is great, and it's good that the interior spaces are correctly scaled to the figures, and the exterior just works well enough, you know? So no real complaint there. But um, the set is basically perfect, in my opinion, but I think at the end it's good to go over a couple of minor things that I think are missing. The main one being that the set doesn't include a figure for Hagrid. Now, I kind of get it, since they would have had to come up with something that's bigger than a nano figure. Now, personally, I think they could have used the old LEGO Games micro figure pieces, or even the LEGO baby figure piece that was introduced in 2017, I'm gonna go with. Um, yeah, but um, they, they could have done that, but honestly, I think think Hagrid was even worth a new mold, and if they weren't going to do any of that, I honestly wouldn't have minded too much just having him be the same size as everyone else. Having him missing definitely is a bit of an odd feeling for such an important character, and I mean, his home is even represented here, but he's not here to go with it. And that's definitely the main problem with the set, like, that's number one. Everything else here is pretty minor, like the couple issues I mentioned, like with the Great Hall using that one prefab wall piece and the bay window not going through to the other side. 
Yeah, those are just, again, super tiny nitpicks about the set. And, um, yeah. Obviously, this set is also not a complete model of Hogwarts. It is missing important structures like the Astronomy Tower and Clock Tower. But I don't, but I don't mind that too much, as both of those have previously been depicted in LEGO minifigure scale sets. And, well, the Clock Tower we already know is being reimagined, and I think it's basically a guarantee that the same will be said for the Astronomy Tower, where we'll, where we'll be getting them both in minifig scale. So, I'd, so I'm very glad that here they decided to go with some new structures in, on the right instead of using new versions of old ones. The Great Hall and Grand Staircase Tower, though, were just necessary to have the landscape of Hogwarts, so it was a great idea that they chose to include those again. Um, yeah, that's really all the complaints I can muster up for the set. They didn't include Hagrid... And there are a couple tiny issues with the Great Hall, but everything other than that is flawless. So, would I recommend that you pay $400 for this set? That is 83 galleons, 2 sickles, and 23 knots. Is it worth it? Heck yeah. Again, this is easily my favorite set the LEGO group has ever made. In 60 years of the LEGO system existing, this is number one. I mean, it's, I mean, again, even though it's a nanofigure scale, the dollhouse play, the play design of the normal Harry Potter sets is not sacrificed at all. Um, the figures all look great and are super cute. The build is beautiful from the outside and super fun and homey on the inside. I mean, there isn't really isn't anything else to say here, and I'm just repeating myself. It is a beautiful set, a wonderful set, a fantastic set. And this 2018 line really was my revival of my love of Harry Potter, because while I was still a huge fan of the series, it was definitely waning the past couple of years, especially around 2016, 2017, when we got it in LEGO Dimensions, it was still really cool to be getting new Lego Harry Potter, and I still love the books and movies, but, you know, I was kind of getting into other stuff. But this series brought me back. So, to add, to, so to add a bit of an amendum to J.K. Rowling's old quote, and I might paraphrase a bit here, whether you come back by book, or film, or brick, Hogwarts will always be there to welcome you home. And... I'd like to thank JK for that, because through the ups and downs the series has endured through its 22-year history, for the good, the bad, and the Harry Did You Put Your Name in the Goblet of Fire, um, I love this franchise, and this set is a perfect, en perfect encapsulation of everything I love about it. Hogwarts is such a fantastic location and somewhere that we all wish we could go, the characters are all great, and we love to hate Umbridge. Umbridge is the worst character ever. And, um, yeah. I love the set. It's perfect. And that's really all there is to it. So thank you all so much for watching this two-hour-long review comprising two videos. And... Wherever we come in next, I hope to see you there as well. And while I don't normally shill for my channel, maybe subscribe if you aren't already. I don't know. Just a thought. But, um, yeah. And I will see you all next time. Farewell, everyone. And sayonara for now.